I'm Margaret Farnsby. This is my husband, Henry. We've been dying hey. to swing by. Say welcome. Drop off some of my award-winning cupcakes. Oh. First place at the St. Anne's Parish Bake Sale, seven years running. <laughs> Not that we like to brag. He's lying. We love to brag. <laughs> <laughs> you are so sweet. I'm Samantha. This is Jay. Fair warning, he's a pretty talented chef himself. Yeah, might give your cupcakes a run for their money this year, Margaret. Well, I certainly don't think that would be appreciated. Oh, no, I was kidding. Oh! oh. <laughs> Our new neighbors are funny. Oh, I love it! <laughs> Bless you. Pardon, uh, allergies. Sneezing in public, so unladylike. I told her a nip of cocaine would wipe that hay fever right out, but does she listen? I'm sorry, did you say cocaine? Mm -hmm. Everyone knows cocaine's excellent for allergies. Okay, well, in the 1980s, it was a Schedule II narcotic. Well, Peter, in the 1880s, it was a medical wonder drug. From headache to hysteria, four out of five barbers prefer cocaine. Banned on Reddit. How the fuck do you do that? I, you know, I'm trying to figure that one out myself. Uh, uh, well, and, and here's the thing. They told me on this one subreddit page that I usually post my recaps for on, uh, on you know, the sports of professional wrestling, my... These uh, slam wrestling yes. recaps. Yes. Okay. You know, that I have an MBA. Right. I'm drinking already. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. We're not in sports yet. We're not in sports. You're not the boss of me. (laughs) And yet. uh, But no, apparently they said I, because I covered for AEW Dynamite, which I'll talk about in the sports page. They said that uh, I was banned because my... Your headline was a little spoilery, or so they say. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I I, uh, posted spoilers uh, that... And I did a 20, uh, without waiting 24 hours in advance. Okay. In which I'm going, A, the fuck, it's on TNT. It's not like I'm spoiling anything (laughs) well in advance of that. I'm just shocked to find out that Reddit has moderators. Right? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I had no idea. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, and apparently I'm going to be off for three days. I will never see... You can't get on Reddit for three days? Well, I can't uh, post any new content oh, on Reddit. Oh, no. Gosh. Tragedy. I'm, this is terrible. Tragedy. How am I ever going to get through? I guess I'll just have to find another way to circumvent the uh, uh, big social media, just like our, uh, you know, our true president, Donald uh, Julius Trump. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, and he's got his own platform going, right? Oh, allegedly. Yeah. So it's never going to happen. I know. <laughs> it's never going to happen. It, it it really isn't. But he'll get a bunch of chumps to pay for it. Not us. Because, no, some other chumps. Yeah, because we have no money. Anyway, so. uh, these particular chumps. I'm Bill Frost. I'm Tommy Milagro, and welcome to another TV Tam podcast. So I'm so glad you enjoyed us farting around about Reddit for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this week's sponsor uh, of episode 0386 is... Oh, well, that would be OG sponsor, Sugar House Distillery with the rye whiskey. This is their newest bottle, by the way. It's a little purpley. Oh, and it, this is why it the is... La- the label, that is. Yes, but it is handcrafted in the Wasatch Mountains. If you read on the back here, uh, this second Barrel Master release partners... Our first straight wine uh, whiskey with a Tarasan medium toast French oak barrel that previously housed an inky old vine Malbec from Medicino, Medicino, Medi- Medicino County. After nearly 18 months in that magnificent barrel, this rye took its own sweet time to come into focus. The result is a stunning, elegant balance of rye spice framed with aromas and notes of wild cherries and toasted oak. And no, these aren't rose-colored glasses. This rye acquired its unique red hue from its lengthy time in that marvelous barrel. This deceptively well-balanced dram showed us that such a showed us such a range of spice, concentration, and richness that we had to do it justice by offering it at elevated proof. 
So, what's the proof on this sucker? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is why I'm gonna have to take it real easy on you during the sports mm-hmm. page. Okay, right. Um, ninety percent rye. All right. Ten percent malted rye. Hmm. Uh, and uh, as for the, uh, let's see, where the f- where the fuck is it? Um, it is oh. 50 uh, percent uh alcohol by volume so 100 proof nice yeah all right so yes. we're, we're in some wild turkey country here i i don't know if we're even in wild turkey country i think we are in sosala country yeah, my so friend b- basically the big deal about this is that it it is uh aged in wine barrels as opposed to previous incarnations of the rye whiskey in uh like beer barrels mm-hmm it is it is going to be something that is going to hurt you for some time if we don't treat this seriously. Well, I'm, I'm liking it right now. And uh, before we get to, uh, we have some tragedies. Uh, we got some mail, got a mailbag, something oh. in the listener mailbag. Do we want to do listener mailbag or do we want to do the tragedy? Uh, let's do the listener mailbag first. See, <laughs> which what, is, see what Ted's up to. Which is uh, like a tragedy. So no, um, the, the ongoing uh, modern <laughs> Shakespearean tragedy. That, that is... is Ted. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what's Ted up to? Well, as we turn to listener bags, mm. uh, Ted Hansen, who reached out to us at uh, Facebook, um, on our Facebook page, he says, Goliath and Dopesick covered the same subject matter, opioid addiction, tough to watch, both of them, but I gotta recommend it. Sometimes... Art and entertainment steers us in front of not what we want to see, but what we should see. Watch them. Get all depressed. And then put on <laughs> and then put on an episode of Ted Lasso. You'll be fine. Yeah, so he's talking about the fourth and uh, uh, final season of Goliath, wherein Billy Bob Thornton takes on Big Pharma. And J.K. Simmons. Yeah, and meanwhile, you also have Dope Sick on Hulu with uh, Michael Keaton and uh, several other people. I haven't gotten to Dope Sick yet. I'm going to check it out. But uh, I'm going to say this right now. Goliath is a better choice because musical number. Uh, yeah. I never thought I'd say got, that, but... You got that J.K. Simmons musical number that makes <laughs> makes it all happen. Yes. Oh, uh, P.S. A Million Little Things still sucks. <laughs> I, I assume. <laughs> I figured that, yeah. All right. No news slash there. Nope. All right. And uh, tragedies. Oh, we have deaths in the TV world. Uh, the the only true world that uh, our precious celebrities house themselves in. Uh, which one do you want to go with first? Do you want to go? Gunther. Oh, that's right. Oh, that would be James Michael Tyler. Uh, Gunther from uh, the Central Perk Barista on Friends. Uh, he fif- he was 59, and apparently he, uh, sweet lady, uh, ass cancer got him. Mm. Or is that, the, is that prostate cancer? Is that, s- no, I, that, I'm thinking, I don't know. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking colon cancer. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Uh, prostate is, uh, the, the male G spot cancer. Mm. And, right. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. If anybody remembers him, or if you've been watching him because you've been binging him on Netflix, because you know, no, you, you can't binge them on Netflix anymore. Not anymore. Nope. Oh, HBO okay. Max. Oh, okay, it's the only place you can watch Friends now. Works for me. Yeah, apparently uh, he was the barista at the Central Perk and uh, kept pining away for Rachel. But honestly, he's all right without her. I'm oh yeah, say. he's doing fine without her. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he did some other stuff, but that's what everybody knows him for. Just like the other. Celebrity death, uh, Peter Scolari. Oh. Everybody says, well, Bosom Buddies. Well, he did a lot of other shit besides Bosom Buddies. He yeah. Was, he was on New Heart. He won an Emmy on Girls playing Lena Dunham's father. Mm-hmm. And you should get a prize for that. Yeah. Kind of goes without saying. Yeah. Let's see. New Heart. And uh, I think there was something else he also did as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. And apparently um, he, he did uh, theater. Theater. Yes. Uh, and he appeared many times, including in Hairspray, Sly Fox, Wicked, Magic Bird, and, oh, this is interesting, he uh, he even acted alongside his bosom buddy Tom Hanks, uh, see mm, what I did there? What? what where? Uh, in Lucky Guy in 2013. Hmm, okay. So, they, they uh, managed to connect again. How awesome is nice. that? Nice, all right. Yeah. But, you know. Uh, TV is, is always a lots of uh, tragedy right there. Uh, we try to recognize them in our own way. 
Um, but, you know, they're going to hell. But uh, Hey, you got some new stuff this week. You do or I uh, do? Well, no, you probably do. I know I do. Yeah. Uh, day this episode drops, Monday the 25th. Do you remember a series from around 2004 that aired on USA called The 4400? A little bit, but I never really got into it. It was a group of people, 4,400 people, who disappeared off the face of the earth and uh, reappeared years later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this was kind of like Lost little before, lost yeah. uh, before that series took off. Yeah, it lasted like uh, three years, I think, on USA Network. And now it's back as a, they're doing a reboot as a CW series. Mm. Don't know why. Okay. Don't know who was like, you know what show we really need to remake? You know what we need well, a green light? Yeah, uh, yeah. so this is 4400. Just take the the off, mm -hmm. drop the the, and there you go. It's the 4400. It's 4400. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure who this is for, who's supposed to care about this. Didn't it kind of have like a hero's vibe to it as well, or? I barely remember. Yeah. I barely remember. Bigger question, is Tim Kring involved in this in any way? No. Then no, no. it's probably going to last a season. In more important news, on yes. Tuesday the 26th, uh, season four of The Last OG oh. with uh, Tracy Tracy Morgan. Yes. Uh, I always, almost always want to say Tracy Jordan from 30 <laughs> Rock. But, <I> was... <laughs> but that's because he, he embodies Tracy Jordan, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And he, he keeps it real like that. Yeah. So. Uh, last year, I think the very first HBO Max original, uh, when it, the service premiered was Love Life starring Anna Kendrick. Oh. It was about, a uh, one woman's journey to, through dating and relationships and all that shit. Wait, wasn't that the Quibi thing or? No, this was an HBO Max original Love Life last year. Now it's back. Apparently it's an anthology series. Now we're looking at someone else's Love Life. Oh. Uh, this was played uh, by William Jackson Harper, who you might know from The Good Place as Cheaty. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's the star of the show now. Okay. And other people like uh, Jessica Williams is in here. Mm -hmm. Punky Johnson and uh, Igo like Nuwadam, both from Saturday Night Live. Okay. Cast is already looking great, plus Anna Kendrick will reappear, even and though this isn't it really about her this time. Uh, even though it should be, or? No, no, I think uh, I think the anthology is the way to go. I think little Anna Kendrick goes a long way. Y yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Jason Momoa. Yeah. Minimal Mimosa, I yeah. say. Yeah. Also, on, that's on Thursday on HBO Max. Also on Thursday on Paramount Plus, Star Trek Prodigy. Oh. Another animated series, but this one's more dramatic. What what, and, what makes this different? Uh, well, first of all, we got a Captain Janeway back. Okay, who Kate clamored Mul for that? Kate Mulgrew. Uh, also, uh, voices in here, uh, among the voices in the cartoon here, are uh, Jason Mansukis. Mm -hmm. So that should be funny. All right. And uh, yeah, this is a half hour, but this is more for young adult audiences, and it was originally intended for Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. and it, it will eventually end up there. After it runs on Paramount Plus, why not Adult Swim, or is it just because because it's all CBS? Uh, okay, so it's yeah. the all the whole Viacom network thing. And... Oh yeah, okay, yep, that makes sense. Do you remember uh, Army of the Dead from earlier this year? Zack Snyder's uh, zombie thing on uh, Netflix with uh, Batista. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, I I know I, it's on Netflix, but. Uh, haven't turned it on. I'd, I'd recommend it. It's pretty good. Really? Yeah, but okay. here, here's Zack Snyder's prequel movie to that. What? Army of Thieves. Okay. Uh, so, uh, focusing on the character from Army of the Dead, uh, safe cracker Ludwig, mm. who is uh, reprising his role here. This is a this is before the zombie apocalypse. All right. It's more of a uh, more of a heist. Oh, it's yeah. more heisty than zombie. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Okay. And uh, here's something I did not know was coming. Hmm. Colin in black and white. This is basically Colin Kaepernick, The Wonder Years, mm. where uh, he narrates a uh, narrates the story of him growing up, uh, growing up, and becoming a young football player. Okay, he's not a good narrator. I've seen the trailer. He's not, how bad are we talking here? Well, he's got this kind of squeaky voice for one thing. Oh yeah, I've, and, I've heard his voice. Yeah, talk. and uh, he he's. Yeah, I don't know if he was the right. Well, it seems like he's the only choice. Then again, he ain't, he ain't that great as a narrator. Well, 
and I think I know, because uh, I've heard his voice on the Nike commercials. If you don't believe in something, you'll believe in anything. Just believe in yourself. Is that that what, sort of shit. Is, is that how it goes? The saying goes? Something like that. That makes no sense. Well, it was a Nike commercial. <laughs> okay. It wasn't Shakespeare. Anyway, here's the funniest part about this. This is a, a six-part miniseries. This is on Netflix. Colin in black and white. His parents, his adoptive parents, are played by Mary Louise Parker. Okay. And Nick Offerman. The fuck? Both of them pretty much unrecognizable. First of all, Nick Arf- Offerman, no mustache, uh-huh. no beard. Uh-huh. Mary Louise Parker in a short blonde wig. The, I can think of a many fe- things wrong with this already. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're they're barely recognizable. And, you know, the, the trailer, aside from his narrating, looks interesting, but I don't know. Now, is this like his attempt at going, everybody hates Chris? Maybe. Instead of... Instead of it, it's everybody hates Colin. Maybe, yeah. Okay, all right. I'll look, show me what he, you got. He's got to have something to do. I know you can't. You can't play football. So right, they were not going to let him play football. So this is what you get. He's going to be making making shit for Netflix. Hope you're happy, NFL. Well, you know what? He could just stick with professional wrestling. He could go there. Really? Okay. Hey, think it, they'd want him. <laughs> It's amazing who you can get True. into professional all right, all right. wrestling. Yeah. Here's another weird one. <laughs> on right. uh, on Friday on the CW, Scooby-Doo, where are you now? Who clamored for this? This is a sort of a sort of a meta reboot where in the gang uh, the gang comes to a TV studio to discuss their career. Mhm. And uh, but meanwhile, a mystery pops up while filming. <sighs> Yeah, so it's like uh, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, all over the scenes. What middle-aged guy with uh, bad real estate ideas uh, is uh, causing trouble? Who's who's fucking who? What fucking nerd thought this up? But yeah, yeah so that's happening. That's on Friday on the CW. <laughs> and is Velma sick of just being the bait for? Uh, Maybe she should be. A- as should Shaggy and Scooby. And Sunday, October thirty-first. That is Halloween. In case mm-hmm. you didn't know. Oh. You mean uh, where all the spookiness goes? That's yeah. Uh, season thirteen of Doctor Who, drop, yes, drops on BBC America. This is uh, Jodie Whittaker's final time around as the Doctor. Oh, that's fabulous! And uh, this is the uh, we're apparently apparently we're kicking off the Halloween apocalypse. Uh, evil forces mm-hmm. are uh, are are gathering. No. Right, right. Uh, big bads are happening, and yep. uh, it'll all be very brill. Don't worry about it, mate. So we got my fam here, and I'm just going to get all sonic and uh, it'll be just wonderful. Yeah. Bigger question. Have you talked to Rebecca Frost about this Doctor Who uh, drop? I have not, no. Uh, okay. I just barely found out about it today. Okay. So I'm just kind of wondering how much she's squeeing or... Gonna be crying because we're gonna be transitioning to a new doctor. Second question: Have they announced the new doctor? No. Interesting. No, they have not. You know, because they always make a big deal about who the next doctor is gonna be before the final season drops. And well, they have not yet. Mm. We still got a week before this thing premieres, though. Oh, so okay. anything could happen. Okay, so they're pr- trying to keep this on uh, yeah double secret uh, probation. Yeah. Got it. Okay. If they were going with uh, Peter Scolari, well... Yeah, no. that ain't happening. No, no. Unless, unless he's going to regenerate. Maybe, yeah. Because that is part of Doctor Who. Yeah, so that's it for the new stuff this week. And I finally finished uh, Squid Game. Okay. And uh, good good series. A lot, now, of, lot of action, a lot of twists. But the thing is, I still don't understand why this thing is such a big fucking deal. It ain't they, that good. So that's my question, and, and I haven't done it because everybody has made such a big fucking mm-hmm. deal out of it. Yep. Oh, you got to see this. It's a, oh, good. It's a, fuck that. It's, no. not, it's not that good. This is the same shit <laughs> with um, uh, anytime something big drops on Netflix. The only time it was really important was Glow, and then they got mm-hmm. rid of it. Yeah. You know what you did, Netflix? Go in the corner. Also not a big deal on Netflix. Dave Chappelle's the closer. Okay, um, now is it because it was uneven at the end, or well, the whole thing was uneven. It's not not one of his better specials. Mm-hmm. So th- this is the, this is the the final his final Netflix special, and uh, he didn't quite stick the landing. And of course, here's the thing that really kills me: that uh, it it was dealing. He was trying. 
I will say that. I didn't say he succeeds. Not quite. He, no. he tried to deal with the transphobia, and he related an experience with uh, somebody in his audience who was identified as trans. Daphne. And, yeah, that I, it just felt more like it was a spoken word than it was a comedy special. I I have a way to deal with this, though. Uh, first of all, it if people are getting upset at Netflix saying he's going to be triggering trans... First of all, have you not paid attention to Dave Chappelle all these 20 years? <laughs> are you sure this is the hill you want to die on? Secondly, do you want somebody that's black and woke and funny... I got three words for you. W. Kamal Bell. There's your go-to guy. Go seek him. Which, by the way, Private School Negro, very good comedy special. That'll satisfy your Jones for a while. Where's that? That's on uh, Netflix. That Uh, too? Okay. Last time I checked, yeah. All right, cool. And thirdly, if you really want Chappelle to get on board with LGBTQ, I have a simple answer, and uh, I know the Netflix executives are listening to us as we speak. Hanging on our every word. Every single time. I'm going to pitch. Here's my elevator pitch. Dave Chappelle rides with Bill Frost and I, and we go to wrestling shows where he meets up with wrestlers that are in LGBTQ. I'm talking Jamie Senegal. I'm talking Nyla Rose from AEW. I'm talking... He gets to me, Pero from the NWA, who's a bear, like literally and figuratively. Okay. Dude is huge. All right. I'm saying that's the way we bridge the gap like that. So <laughs> Netflix, you know how to find us and uh, dump the truckload of money on uh, on our studio doorstep. So, yeah. <laughs> and discussion. And the other thing I... Uh... Uh, finished uh, well along with most of America. Uh, the latest season of American Horror Story. Okay. Uh, concluded. And? It was in it was in two halves. How was it? Five episodes piece. The first half was kind of so so. Okay. There's a little bit of a vampire zombie vibe to it. Mm-hmm. Second half all about aliens. Right. And uh, aliens and alien invasion and alien uh, taking over the human race. Oh, we're not doing the ET thing or no no they're. Uh, Basically, they've come to Earth to uh, mate with humans to create an alien-human hybrid. Right. And it took them decades to get it right. Okay. And they finally had to impregnate Cindy Crawford's daughter, yeah. as you would as you would imagine. Yeah. Cindy Crawford's daughter, I cannot remember her name, but she's one of the main actors in the second half of American Horror Story double feature. Let me see if I can look it up here in a second. And, uh, yeah, the first half, first five episodes, uh, sort of a vampire-y thing set on the East Coast. It was okay. This uh, The second half uh, set in the mostly in the desert, Area 51 area. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it, the second half, I preferred the second half. Oh, shit. Okay. Kaya Jordan Gerber. Yeah. That's her name. And as I'm looking at her, oh, shit. Looks almost exactly like Cindy Crawford. Jesus. Yeah. Maroon. Actually, her son looks like a dead ringer for mm-hmm. Cindy. Anyway, but. she's, uh, I don't know if she, you could qualify her as much of a great actress, but <laughs> you didn't need to be for American Horror Story. Nor nor was Cindy Crawford a great actress, but. Come on, fair game. A classic. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening, man. Not happening. Uh, but if that's the way you want to go, if that's the hill you're going to die on, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, a couple more shows I'm, I'm quite enjoying of the new fall season. Uh, one of them is ghosts on CBS just got picked up for the rest of the season. I think it's the first, uh, big pickup of, mm-hmm. uh, for the networks of the season. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, good old I zombies in there. Yes. And, uh, Pretty goddamn funny. Oh. I'd recommend it. Uh, oh, I'll save it for the sports. Here's my question. Did you see Dune yet? Not yet, no. I did. and I did see Halloween Kills. Ooh. And that's locked and loaded, so I'm just going to wait until Halloween comes a little closer. One spoiler hmm? for Halloween Kills. Which is? If you're expecting, expecting to see a lot of uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, don't. Okay. She's barely in it. Uh-huh. So they tease it, you. It's still pretty good. Yeah. It's not quite as good as the one from a couple of years ago. It's a it's a nice setup for what's going to be the big finale next year <laughs> for Halloween Ends. It's, a, it's cool. this, this director is working on this particular trilogy. 
But it's uh, executive produced by uh, uh, John Carpenter, right? Maybe. I think so. I don't know. All right. But this particular director, whatever his name is, he's got a vision for a trilogy that ends next year. And I would say for anybody that's watching Dune on HBO Max, go to a movie theater. Just, you know. You're encouraging people to go out and die? Is that it, Tommy Milagro? First of all, you Death merchant. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> you weren't taking up that much space in the world anyway. Yeah. Secondly, <laughs> okay. No, secondly, Fine. It it does deserve to be seen on a big movie theater. Right. It really demands it. It's okay to watch it if you need the if you're like me, you need the closed captioning because Denise Villeneuve uh, <laughs> has the audio cranked up in such ways sometimes you miss the actor's words. But uh, dialogue, yeah. I mean, really, who needs that? <laughs> yeah, that was another thing on uh, Squid Game. Oh, yeah? Uh, you have the option of watching it uh, in Korean with subtitles or in English, dubbed English. So, Or you can do both. There's a there's an option to where you can watch it dubbed in English and it still has the subtitles. Oh, that's got to be so confusing as fuck. Well, they don't match up. I know they don't. They yeah. never do. But, but they really don't match up. Here's my question then. Uh, are you subs or dubs? Um, I'm thinking I'm sticking with subs. Okay. I think subs is the way to go with that one. And there's our episode Sub- title. Subs versus dubs. Subs not dubs. Oh, oh yeah, that's even better. Subs not dubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know there's some anime uh, listeners going, no, you do dubs. No, we, we, it's always subs. There's that uh, argument apparently. Really? Yeah. No wonder I n- don't interact with anime people. See? This is what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm uh, more of a uh, subtitle person myself. Uh, I can I can read. Yeah, yeah. I, it's like a comic book. If you want to put your uh, subtitle reading skills to the real test, mm-hmm. watch uh, Los Espookies on HBO Ooh, Max. That's the one to watch Funny for as hell, yeah. <laughs> Funny as hell. And uh, it is from uh, almost two years ago now. There's another season coming, but it's pretty much entirely in Spanish and very fast Spanish. <laughs> oh, uh, where everybody is just rocketing forward with mm-hmm. their Spanish, huh? Yeah. All right. You got you to read quick. Okay. And, uh, okay. you know. Is what, it what, that what time? What did, you lose, what did you lose there? Uh, the, the damn thing, uh, the... The monitor for uh, my sports was uh, lost for a second here. Now I got it up, so hit the music. It's sports with Tommy Milagro. Go team. From the sports desk of the TV10 podcast, we deliver to you only the sport of professional wrestling. Now, not on Reddit. And we... Uh, <laughs> Far from Reddit. Oh, fuck you, Reddit. Anyway, <laughs> we, I, we got a lot to cover here. So let's start with... Just this last week alone, not only do I cover for the NWA and MLW, because that is my B for SlamWrestling.net. Thankfully, I've got an MBA. Here we go. That's the last time I'm going to do that too, man. That 50 proof is going to be wicked for you in a minute. 100 proof? <sighs> that is just that is just begging for <laughs> a problem here. That's going to be a tragedy. <sighs> for who, I don't know. Yep. 50% 50% alcohol, 100 proof. God yep, and I am I am hearing the slurring already. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I did cover for AEW Dynamite on Saturday just because, you know, TNT's got other things going on like uh sports and uh, so-called sports. Yeah, like basketball. <laughs> Is it basketball or baseball? Um, I think it's both uh, because it's uh, something called a world. Oh, and the NHL. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now the NHL is on TNT, too. Yeah, the Canadians uh, with their <laughs> import. And yeah. then um, uh, the base, uh, no, Blurm's Ball. Blurm's Ball. Blurm's, Blurm's Ball, was. yes. Yeah. And the Baskets Ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all those. Yeah. It's all so-called sports. Right. But they're going to be returning back on Wednesday night. But this last Wednesday night, they uh, had a couple of uh, great matches there. The ones that really stuck out, and it's in my report at SlamWrestling.net, Lance Archer faced off against Eddie Kingston. They're in a tournament to uh, face off again for the AEW World Championship. At one point, Lance Archer... Goes for a moonsault and under rotates and landed like directly 
on top of his head. And he, um, yeah, that was that shutter you did. That's what I said as well. My exact words were, oh, fucking God. Because I just got finished watching Dark Side of the Rings, uh, Frontier Martial Arts of Wrestling, and how Hayabusa, like, basically was unable to walk. I thought we had that situation. Thankfully, he walked out under his own power, and uh, he uh, sent a tweet uh, saying, listen, we choose to do this and take our health and lives in our hands every night. I've done that move hundreds of times over my career, just under-rotated. Could have been much worse. Thank you all at AEW for taking amazing care of me and protecting me. I'll be back. So, thank God for that. And uh, in other news, we are... Uh, well, uh, in other news uh, around the globe, as it were, the NWA, uh, one of their women wrestlers, Kylie Ray, is going to be taking a break from that. So apparently, she's done this before. She's been in companies, then dropped out. Uh, came in companies, dropped out, and she was uh, she came into NWA and had to take a hiatus. And she wrote this, and this is from her Twitter page. Um, Due to unforeseen circumstances, I will not be able to perform at Freelance Underground and NWA this weekend, nor AAW next weekend. Unfortunately, I find my fellow, my, I find, or sorry, I found myself in a relapse situation and need some time for recovery. This has been going on since late August and has gradually regressed since then. I tried holding this in and working through the pain, doing my best to fulfill commitments, but it's become too much and needed help. I have been having a difficult time differentiating what is real and what is fake, especially in these types of environments. Regretfully, I tried masking the pain through marijuana and alcohol. So between that and her mental health struggles, it's going to be a while. We do wish her the best and a speedy recovery. So definitely take care of yourself as far as that goes. And here's the other bit of controversy of late. Um, did you watch uh, SmackDown over the weekend, uh, uh, Bill? Yeah, I think so. All right. Now, there was a segment. At- From what I remember. <laughs> uh, let me rephrase my question. What do you remember from SmackDown before the alcohol made you go sleepy? Go by? I don't recall. That's, what what, that is what the, happened? What happened? First of all, that was the correct answer. What happened? So apparently, uh, Charlotte Flair woo, and the man, Becky Lynch, mm-hmm. were traded off to different brands of WWE, and they are their respective champions, so they were going to swap titles okay oh okay i did see this right now what do you recall from that instance didn't go well Uh, describe that if you would for our (laughs) uh, viewing audience uh becky lynch was not really having it right and uh and then violence ensued that's exactly right and apparently that was not it was not a smooth exchange and that was not in the script. And oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's the thing. Apparently, there was supposed it was supposed to be a much smoother handoff, and then it was going to translate to something else, uh, to you know something culminating in Survivor Series. Now that is not the case. And in fact, according to various reports, uh, even after the segment ended, Charlotte Flair uh, was just absolutely upset she was escorted off the uh Hmm. off the uh off the set okay (laughs) so uh, and apparently this has been building up for a while with charlotte she's become in every sense a diva uh even Mm -hmm. though that's exactly what they are these days but now what her future is like who knows but it might be time for Charlotte to just kind of walk away for a little bit. You know, there's this other company called All Elite Wrestling. Just saying. Mm. <laughs> and finally this, and I think this is a good place to end it up. We need some good news. Don't we need some good news in fuck, our life? Fuck yeah. All right. So Corey Graves uh, announced uh, via, the, via Twitter, where else, uh, that uh, he and Carmella 
are engaged to be married. Actually, it was Carmilla on Twitter who wrote, replied back, best birthday ever. So, mazel tov to the happy couple there, and uh, we hope to be invited to the wedding. Oh, some- I'm sure we will. Of course we will, because why? We cover sports. It's sports. I'm Tommy Milagro. Go team. <sighs> I think we had something on Twitter. Uh, actually, let me take a look here while, while you vamp it up. Was, uh, it was uh, one of our regulars, and uh, basically it's about his show. We may or may not have uh, oh, told them. I did, them, I did them to see watch that. It was, let me shake that out of the listener bag. It was just, uh, all right, I'm shaking it out, shaking it out right now. Uh, let's see. Nope, not that. Oh, here we go. Um, uh, oh, it, it's kind of relating to us. Um, it's from Uncle. Mm-hmm. Uh, he replies back, How come you never told me Gangs of London, US was this good? And my first question, oh, wait, now I'm remembering, uh, Gangs of London on AMC Plus. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we uh, I think we mentioned it when it premiered and never followed up on it because it's one of those things like I'm going to get to. Yeah. It's going to be I'm guessing some holiday viewing. It that's it's like we with me and Reservation Dogs. I just there's too and many al- shows. And also me and Heels. Yeah. Yeah, but Gangs of London, I know a lot of people who fucking love this show. Mm-hmm. And so I'm kind of looking forward to finally getting to it. You can watch it on AMC Plus or you can watch it on Prime Video. I haven't been seeing a lot of ads for this uh, for AMC Plus. Uh, I guess Jeffrey Dean Morgan Negan mm-hmm. uh, is having a show come up called Magic City. Have you heard uh, a lot about that? That's an old series. Okay, that's so. from uh, several years ago. It was a Star series. Oh, okay, that's why I don't uh, recall this. As Jeffrey well. Dean Morgan, uh, yeah, he was in it. He was one of the stars of it. This mm-hmm. is this was pre Walking Dead. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, it was a pretty good series. It only lasted one season. It's sort of a murder mystery set in uh, right around the I think it was in the fifties at a murder mystery at a at a uh, Florida fancy florida or maybe it was even cuban resort Mm -hmm. okay and uh i remember it being pretty good not great yeah but yeah he he turned out to do some other fun he went on to some better stuff yes he did but it's it's worth watching and his scenery is the scenery is great yeah oh really and the clothes too yeah Oh, okay. Well, then maybe I should yeah. try to subscribe back to AMC Plus. But uh, Gangs of London, yeah, you don't need AMC Plus. You got, apparently you can also see it on Prime Video now. Oh, really? That's what it says here. Okay. Real good rarely lies to me. <laughs> uh, every once the... in a while, every once in a while they get it wrong. Uh, like Reddit? Maybe, yeah. Like Reddit, <laughs> I think realgood.com is right more often than uh, Reddit is. I think I need to. Yeah, if to if this. you ever need to know where to stream a show, besides asking us, right? Because we can tell you. Yeah. Uh, check out realgood.com. Not a sponsor, <laughs> Thank it's, you. but it's a free site. <laughs> but it will tell you. You punch in the name of a show or an actor or whatever, and it'll it will tell you. It's like okay, here's where you can stream it, okay. or here's you cannot stream it anywhere. <laughs> Sometimes you come up snake eyes. You got nothing. Good luck with that. Sometimes shows aren't available anywhere. What's going on with what's uh, what we do in the shadows? Well, you saw the episode. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really uh, sad development. The most recent one. I'm not going to say what it was, but neither <laughs> am I. But I, I didn't see that one coming. No, not at all. No. But it did explain a couple of questions. So, uh, no, we're not talking about Nandor, who is trying to go into the Sabra slumber, <laughs> the super slumber. Uh, the, oh, is that how you uh, phrase the, su- the super slumber? Yeah, the super slumber. I would like. What to, the fuck? I would like to do that myself. Yes, <laughs> we all would at oh, one yeah. point. <laughs> so, uh, what should be? What would you tell the people to watch harder as we get the fuck out of here? Oh, well, other than what we do in the shadows, it's actually doing something. like... Season finale this week. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's the big reason right there because character development. Mm-hmm. What I know, right? Weird. <laughs> And uh, I'm also going to say other big thing to watch harder, Stargirl. That is starting to get yeah. really good here. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, you got to finish up heels. You got to finish up heels. I'm going to do it. Okay. That's all I ask. Yeah. I will continue to highly recommend Doom Patrol on HBO <laughs> oh, Max. Yeah. That's the other one. Uh, Titans to a lesser degree. Uh, well, we unfortunately, we got cringy Batman, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck... Fuck Batman. Fuck Batman. That one, anyway. 
<laughs> and also this series uh, I'm watching on Paramount Plus. I might be the only one. A Guilty Party starring Kate Beckinsale. Yeah, she's a she's a Denver newspaper reporter? <laughs> question mark. Yeah. Who's trying to uh, crack a case of a woman who's been uh, jailed and convicted and jailed of a murder she may have not committed. What and was it called again? It's called Guilty Party. That's right. On Paramount Plus. And uh, Kate Beckinsale is maybe a good journalist. I've seen little evidence of it in the show so far. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, maybe she'll uh, crack this case. I don't know. Unless uh, unless Veronica Mars becomes involved, <laughs> fucking forget it. Yeah. Fucking forget it. And also uh, previously mentioned Ghosts on yes. CBS. Very funny. One I'm not impressed with so far. Uh, Is this our uh, fuck, uh, fuck that show? Well, or? okay, there's two two different uh, halloween horror-related shows that premiered pretty much in the same week on the same network. And uh, at first I was like, really, really looking forward to one is kind of like, ah, don't care about that one. Mm-hmm. It's kind of flipped now. At first I didn't give a fuck about Chucky. Oh. But uh, yeah, I'm, now, it's in, I'm, now I'm interested. Uh, you're back in the chump, the Chucky camp. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, Day of the Dead. Both both of these are on Sci-Fi. Okay. Day of the Dead. So far, not fucking impressed. Really? Yeah. Not wow. not that great. Okay. Well, are we? George zomb- Romero was rolling over in his grave. <laughs> uh, are- or trying to claw his way out of it. Why can't it be both? Hmm. And bigger question then. Uh, is it just because we're burned out on zombies at this point? Could be, and this is not particularly special in any way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I can agree with that. There's sure. one character on here, sort of a uh sort of a Lauren Bobert, uh Marjorie Taylor oh. Green. She's a local uh uh conservative candidate for office or oh, she's God. yeah, she's a gun gun toting mm. gun toting conservative. <sighs> Tell me she she's dies. she's mildly funny. Wait, what? She's mildly funny. She's the only interesting person on this show so far. Wow. I know, right? Have we... That's that's what I'm saying. <sighs> it's like, I don't want to laugh at it, but might as well. Mm-hmm. Is, might it kinda, as well. is it like with me and Tyrus uh, watching him on NWA and he says something funny like... You know, uh, you're, is he on NWA? NWA? He's on MWA. Really? He's their okay. television champion. And then sometimes he says things like... Uh, what what's go what's up with uh, y'all Missouri? I thought you were a red state, and they keep booing him, and then uh, he follows up with, "Well, what's the uh, y- you know your Disney uh, uh, special that you like, Deliverance?" So <laughs> uh, it's like I I want to hate him, but yeah, damn, that's yeah, funny. Yeah. So yeah, Dawn of the Day of the Dead. It's actually called Day of the Dead, and it's not that great. It's on Sci-Fi. Okay. Would would not no. We we won't recommend it. Uh, in fact, we'll say soft watch it. Yeah, and also, uh, yeah. If you gave up on Why the Last Man, we mentioned it last week has been canceled. No, no needs, no need to continue. Can I recommend a comic book of Why the Last Man? And then sure, you'll say, yeah, yeah. Why? Oh, why don't you try a no. comic book? Yeah. And also, uh, Halloween Kills uh, worth checking out, but only if you've already seen the one from 2018. Yep. And uh, because it it takes up like immediately after the end of that movie, it, it picks up. It, it's better than the second version of Halloween directed by Rob Zombie. Yeah, those Rob Zombie. Yeah, the the first first one, one was all right. The first one was actually my favorite, mm-hmm. but the second one, and, and I know the problem: Sherry Moon Zombie. <laughs> That's way too much Sherry Moon. Yeah. Am I wrong? No, never, <laughs> never. <laughs> uh, yeah, that those are words that are very scary for me too. Yeah, uh, but I will say the the latest incarnation of the Halloween movies have been spot on, mm-hmm. and you know he, he's unstoppable and a, a terrible, horrible killing machine, kind of like the GQP. All that, yeah. So all that, yeah. I oh, and you can watch it on the Peacock as well, right? I think it's on the paid only version. I don't know. I'd be surprised if it's on the free version of Peacock. I think it's on the paid version. I yeah. do have that, so I well, I have to because I am a journalist. It's true, yeah. Like you, they keep try- they keep trying to. I know they've been pushing all these ads, like, hey, watch Halloween Kills on Peacock. Not not letting you know that it's like 
yeah, you're going to have to jump to the paid version to do it. <laughs> We're not going to give it to you on the free version. But, you know, there's other ways you could watch it, which we won't tell you about uh, unless you really need to know. Go to a theater. That's it. Just, Just like, like Tommy, the merchant of death, tells you to. <laughs> Look, I'm not <laughs> saying you need to go to a theater. I'm just saying eh, you weren't doing much with your life anyway. Why don't you go to a theater? Yeah. Uh, especially if you're uh, vaxxed, you know. What have you got to worry about? Yeah. Like the Delta variant? Pfft, whatever. We still Is that still a, fa- is that still a thing? Uh, I, I forget. It's one of those alphabet letters, uh, the Greek alphabet. It's either uh, Delta or Theta or... Maybe I'm thinking of a Star Trek thing, you know, the th- <laughs> theta variant or yeah, bigger question. Back to I, I've lost track of what di- variant we're on. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of which, Star Trek Prodigy, who is clamoring for Janeway again? Who? I don't know. All right, we'll, we'll have to research <laughs> this. Maybe uh, somebody will come to us, and we'll just ask that later on. Anybody out there who uh, is deeply immersed in the Star Trek universe, right? Let Look- us know. Yeah, go to the lower lower decks and then come back up and tell us what the fuck's going on. Lower decks is my favorite Star Trek. Well, and Picard. That's going to be. Oh, have they dropped the other Picard uh, no, season? No, I'm waiting That's, for that. Uh, I think it's going to be a while. Okay. Uh, uh, well, not too long because you know he's getting up there. Don't say it. I'm I'm saying it right now, but and I don't want to, but. Look how fast we lost Gunther. Mm-hmm. Look how fast we lost our bosom buddy. We can't wait for uh, Picard. We need it now. Yeah. So that's enough. We uh, we want to thank Sugar House Distillery for the rye whiskey. Yes, their Barrel Master series. 100 here. proof, motherfucker. <laughs> Are you feeling it already? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, then let me jump in with our other sponsors, and that would be Outlaw Distillery. That would be Ogden's Own Distillery, the fine purveyors of the five wives, the five husbands, the Madame Paterini Gin, the... Uh, Porter's Fire. The, the port- They just opened a bar up in their distillery in Ogden. Yes, they did. We got to check that out. Um, and I actually have some news about that once we get off the air. Okay, cool. Which uh, brings up the other fun stuff like their uh, their cans, the uh, the vodka soda, uh, among other things. And of course, we have to thank uh, Bohemian uh, Brewery. Uh, and oh. That's it. That, that's all the beer we've got. we got to restock again. This is an emergency. <laughs> Where's our producer? Oh, right. We don't have one anymore. No. Uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do to secure some beer in a little bit. And, of course, uh, thank uh, uh, Ivy over at Boostique uh, with all sorts of accoutrements to really make your drink just sparkle and glisten and glow and... Make it look fancy as fuck with all sorts of glassware. Of course... Holidays are coming, just saying. Yeah. Uh, that is a very good point. Uh, it is holiday time around. Why don't you treat your friend, your family member, to the gift of booze? Because, really, do you want to let them uh, ramble about, about their racist uh, lizard people GQP nonsense? <laughs> Why don't you do that instead? And wherever you go to, wear a mask and get vaxxed. Just vax up. All right, good night, America. And jiggle that hand, that handle right there, and off you fuck. Now, something people don't something know people is that the show's know, opening that credits the show's opening were credits filmed, in New, were filmed Hampshire, in New Hampshire. Even though, as everyone, even though, as we all know, the show took place in rural Vermont. You weren't kidding. You know your new heart. I am impressed. Most people your age have absolutely no appreciation for classic television. No, and forget about art, wine, cinema, wine, jazz. Oh, jazz! We love jazz. If I had to name my favorite artist, Sidney Bechet, Fletcher Henderson. Sidney Bechet, Fletcher Henderson. Louis Armstrong. <laughs> what? You talk, I listen. Amazing. It is so rare to find someone who has an appreciation for anything that came before them. Well, that's the problem. Well, with young that's the problem today. with young people today. Yes, exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, young people are the worst. <laughs>